The ending to the Dragon Ball manga was pretty weird, wasn't it? With highlights such as Goku calling his oldest friend an old hag, talking to a child, and the truth is I'm a mean bastard and proud of it, kicking him in the face, kidnapping said child, also he can abandon his family and friends again. Okay, all jokes aside, the reason why the ending is so weird is because it utilizes the same tropes Dragon Ball became famous for when it started a new saga, with things such as there being a time skip where the characters get new designs and new stages in life, and the introduction of a new character who is usually related to the new conflict which will affect Goku and Co, and in this time it looked like it would be Oob, the reincarnation of a being of pure chaos and evil that Goku vanquished in the previous arc. But then, instead of a whole new story, Dragon Ball just ends. <laughs> you see, Toriyama utilized what's called an opening ending. While not exactly a cliffhanger, these endings don't change the status quo to such an extent that the cast can no longer get into the same type of scenarios that fans came to enjoy. Now, open endings aren't bad per se, but they intrinsically lack conclusive endings that traditionally leave audiences satisfied. And in Dragon Ball's ending, this ending was so open that it led to conspiracy theories that Akira Toriyama was forced to continue with Dragon Ball, presumably at gunpoint, and he actually wanted to end it at the Freezer Saga, where Goku achieved the legendary form of Super Saiyan, avenged his race, all before dying in a literal blaze of glory as Namek exploded. And then another conspiracy theory, with Akira Toriyama wanting to end the manga after the Cell games, when Gohan defeated Cell, succeeded Goku after Goku sacrificed himself to save the planet. Because you know, nothing quite says conclusive ending quite like killing off your main protagonist. Even GT leaned into this, although Goku didn't especially die per se. He more so literally transcended to a higher state of being, and the ending felt very conclusive with the protagonist of Dragon Ball becoming one of the Dragon Balls themselves, and then that ending where Goku waves goodbye to the audience when Dan Dan Kokoro is playing, like, that shit's just beautiful man. And then at first glance, it appears as though the Dragon Ball manga's ending lacks any of these qualities, but although it may not hold you to emotional gunpoint like GT's ending does, you shouldn't underestimate Akira Toriyama, as the fight between Goku, Oob and their characters does indeed speak to the greater themes of the series, with Goku being given a perfect ending to his journey as a martial artist, all while Akira Toriyama manages to fix the greatest writing mistake he made in Dragon Ball, and he does all this while paying homage to the battles that made Goku the martial artist that he is, the battles that put Dragon Ball on the map, the battles that crowned Goku the world's strongest, the battles that occurred during the That's right, Goku vs Oob is one huge homage to the three tournaments Goku ended during the first half of Dragon Ball. And it goes deeper than just mere surface level fan service. Let's start with Oob and what Oob actually is. You see, as we all know, Oob is the reincarnation of Kid Buu, a foe Goku killed in the previous arc. So then, this actually makes it the second time Goku has fought a reincarnation of a villain that he killed in the arc prior, as in the 23rd Budokai, Goku faced off against Piccolo Jr., a reincarnation of King Piccolo, who Goku killed by punching a hole through his stomach. King Piccolo, more like King Pickle Hole, am I right guys? <laughs> And then as for Oob's appearance and backstory, this is actually a callback to Nam, a foe Goku fought in his very first tournament during the 21st Budokai. Firstly, Oob and Nam are both from South Asian regions, or at least South Asian inspired regions. And then they both wear their geese in the same way as a toga form. And also, they both fight to save their villages. Nam wanted water, meanwhile Oob wants to buy food for his village. But okay. Toriyama referencing the first appearance of Piccolo, such a key moment in the franchise makes sense, but why would he waste time acknowledging a nobody like Nam? 
Well, the thing about Nam's fight is that one could actually argue this is where Goku's journey as a martial artist truly takes off, as Nam is the first opponent to give Goku a proper challenge as an honorable martial artist. As prior to his fight with Nam, Goku was flying through the tournament, he was sleeping before matches, he didn't give a shit. <laughs> And then Nam himself even hints at a turning point in the franchise, as his fight hints that Dragon Ball will begin to take itself more seriously as it delves more into martial arts battles and less into uh, light-hearted fun adventures. Therefore, Nam is definitely worth a reference in Goku's final Budokai. And I mean, come on, he made it into Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, the best Dragon Ball game for a reason. So now here's where things really get interesting, as this fight also represents a role reversal of sorts, as Oob doesn't just represent opponents Goku fought in the past, he also represents past Goku himself, as he is a facsimile of Kid Goku. Meanwhile, Goku represents an opponent that he fought during the 21st Budokai in the finals, Jackie Chun aka Master Roshi. And that fight was one of the most important fights Goku had to go through, as by losing to Roshi, he learned that there can always be opponents stronger than him and that he should always aspire to better himself as a martial artist and we've seen this outlook on Goku all throughout the franchise. This is the same lesson that Goku is reinforcing to Oob during their fight, as Oob is aware of the possibility that there could be someone stronger than him, but he hasn't met them while in his village. In this fight, we even see Goku go as far as to adopt a false persona just as his old master did. While although his false identity isn't a physical change like Roshi's, it's a change of his personality. While Goku acts like a dickhead, all until <laughs> the poor kid can't handle the bants and lashes out at him. And then to even to reinforce this new master-student dynamic, this is where Toriyama even redrew the ending in the 2007 re-releases of the Dragon Ball manga, where he has Goku give Oob the Nimbus Cloud just as Roshi gave it to him all those years ago. And then as they fly off into the sunset, we even see an image of Kid Goku alongside Oob, with Goku hanging back with a satisfied smile at his face. So this is where Goku's martial arts journey has concluded. He is now fully taking a student master role with Oob as the new Kid Goku. And then as a cherry on top, the fight also contains a couple callbacks to Tien even. See, Toriyama didn't forget about him in the Boo saga, he had Tien manage to successfully dodge Boo's human extinction attack, he had Tien save Hercule and Dende from Boo's key blast, all before getting knocked out by a disembodied pair of legs. Like damn, bro, are you good? <laughs> Dab. You see, during the fight, the only key base technique Oob uses is a ki eye, a martial arts yell, to expel ki and energy, which is a technique that Tien introduced to the franchise when he deflected Yamcha's Kamehameha with a ki eye of his own. And then Goku responds to this by taking flight, Buku Jitsu, another technique introduced by Tien and also Chaozu. But this does beg the question, why is the ending of the Dragon Ball manga only paying homage to the first half of the series, as the Z portion of the manga contained some of the franchise's most iconic battles and characters? Well, you see, this is where we get into the greatest writing mistake Toriyama made in Dragon Ball and how he used the ending to fix it. I'm here now. I'm doing the best I can. Where are you now? It's your dreams come true. Here we go. You see, both halves of Dragon Ball have very different overarching plotlines. The plotline for the first half of the manga was Goku's path to power as he became the strongest man on earth when he defeated Piccolo at the 23rd Budokai. Meanwhile, for the Z portion of the manga for the second half, Toriyama decided to be much more ambitious as that plotline was all about Goku's successor, his son, Son Gohan, as we follow him from toddler to adult. 
But the issue here is that by the time the Boo Saga rolled around and it was time for Gohan to take the main role, Toriyama realized that he had made Gohan so different to Goku that he just struggled to write him as a main protagonist. You see, while I respect Toriyama for not making Gohan a mini Goku clone who loves martial arts straight out the womb, <laughs> He made Gohan and Goku's childhood growing up and the reasons why they had to fight so different. While Goku started the series as a 12 year old who loved martial arts and got into light hearted adventures and fun tournaments, Gohan was thrown into the deep end from the jump. From age 5, Gohan was fighting for his life against planet destroying genocidal aliens. So then by the time the Cell Saga rolled around and Gohan was supposed to succeed Goku, Toriyama had written a new protagonist for a martial arts shonen battle manga who didn't even like fighting at all. Like Toriyama's plans for the Buu Saga were something else, but I will save that for an entirely different video. So subscribe. So as the Z portion of Dragon Ball's plotline was never truly realized, was never truly accomplished, this is where Oob comes in as a last minute do-over for Toriyama as Oob acts as a midpoint between Kid Goku and Kid Gohan's characters. You see, while he has the timid nature and rage boosts of Kid Gohan, he's closer to the age of Kid Goku and already has some martial arts experience and will be trained by a martial arts master who didn't kill his dad. So it looks like Akira Toriyama left Dragon Ball's ending open because he had the feeling that someday he would return to the franchise and when he did, he would use the character of Oob, a character similar enough to Goku they could write for him as a main protagonist but different enough where it would still seem fresh. But hey, at least well, half of that happened. <laughs> Poor Oob. Maybe one day, you'll get your day. But to be fair to Gohan, it looks as though Toriyama hasn't completely given up on him, as now the beast has been unleashed. So to know more about Gohan's weird ass new transformation, uh, click this video over here. But um, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, like, subscribe if you enjoyed, this has been your casual anime guy, signing out, and stay locked into the cage. Peace out.